guys, just before we get into today's video, I just wanted to send a quick reminder that we now, as a community, have a Patreon page. On my Patreon page, I am posting exclusive content as well as the full unedited versions of these Heartstopper reactions, as well as any other future reactions that come up. We've got a great community building over there with some really awesome conversations, so I would love for you to come and join us over there. The link will be in the description below. Thank you. Anyway, on with the video. Guys, what's good? What's going on? Welcome back to another video and welcome back to the second episode in our series of episode by episode reactions to Heartstopper. So today we're going to be doing episode two of Heartstopper. As you all know, at the end of episode one, we've kind of, you know, a lot of things have happened. Nick and Charlie have met each other. They sit next to each other now in form. Nick has asked Charlie to join the rugby team because he's a really fast runner. Charlie, though he's denying it, quite clearly is getting a bit of a crush on Nick. And towards the end of episode one, we've seen the love interest that Charlie previously had, Ben. That's been cut off by Charlie because he has a girlfriend and he treats him like a dick. So there's a confrontation between the two of them. And then Nick kind of pulls Ben off of Charlie after he forcefully starts kissing him. And then the episode ends with kind of a cute little message exchange between the two of them. Charlie says thank you and puts a kiss on it. And you kind of see Nick gleefully staring out of the window and the kind of the birds comic strip goes past. And I'm guessing we're seeing the, the beginnings of Nick kind of thinking, hmm, like, is this, this be me? Is it, do I like this guy? So yeah, we're gonna jump straight into episode two and see what happens next. We know what happens next. We've read the books, we've already seen it, but we're gonna see what happens next. All right, let's go. And hopefully this time we won't get interrupted by a dog. Their bedrooms are so accurate, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. As I said in my reaction video, that bit still really gets me. Like, I feel like a little bit sick right now. And like I said, like in episode one, I still think it's really admirable that Charlie still goes into the changing room after hearing shit that's being said about him. Because I know if that was me, no way. I already hate that room enough. Such a loser. <laughs> it makes me feel sick when people describe like people as gross because they're gay. Fucking society, man. We've got a long way to go. I also wish I had a bedroom this big when I was a kid, or even now. <laughs> I really want one of those neon signs for doing YouTube videos as well. I love, I love how they both like really struggle to articulate what they want to say and they keep like deleting their messages. It's so cute. Doggo. I love doggos. I love little details like that as well, like from the books coming over to the screen that like in the books, I can't remember which book it is, mentions the fact that like Nick has a double bed but Charlie only has a single and I love that they've included that in the TV show. Can you feel oh, me? Nelly. I love him. I think that is such a beautiful gesture to make to anyone at any point. Like, there's been a couple of situations in my life where, like, friends of mine have gone through really rough things, and I think it's such a huge gesture to say to someone, like, hey, look, if you want to talk, no, I, like, I understand if you don't want to talk, but if you do, just know that I'm your friend and I'm here. Like, it's, it's such a huge gesture. I heard about you coming out last time. That's really brave. It's all just got to find out. Mm. No one was supposed to know. Well, you're brave for putting up with all the negativity. Like, I think that's quite brave of Ben to kind of put himself out there like that, in a way. Why am I sticking up for him? He's a douche. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely him testing the waters there. Definitely. And it backfires. <laughs> Little do you know, Charlie, you're the reason why all that's gonna change. That's self-restraint to like cut a conversation off like that or like end it like that. I never have been able to do like, if I liked someone, even now, like if I enjoy someone's company or whatever, like I want to, I want the conversation to keep going constantly. Like I never want it to stop. <laughs> I really love Yaz, like a lot. I think she's iconic. I also think she's stunning as well. You only need to glance him to see that he's a massive heterosexual. <laughs> Masculine guys can be gay. And no offense, mm -hmm. but you're not exactly the authority in working out who is and isn't gay. And bisexual people exist. 
True. <laughs> oh, I eye roll. Wow. Being a teenager is terrible. You know, when I was a teenager and had a crush on a straight boy, I just repressed it and suffered. That's Same. Tara said you had no friends. I don't say that. <laughs> Darcy has got no filter and I okay. love it. Have you two been friends for a long time? Mm, best girl pals. I also really like Charlie's style. I'm just going to put that out there. Hi. Is my hair too short? It looks the same. But is it okay? It looks the same. <laughs> Tori is a whole mood. I cannot wait to read Solitaire. You made it this way. You can, you can do it. You can do it. Just press the button. Yes. <laughs> love that jumper. You got a haircut. Um, is it? I love that he notices that. <laughs> is it bad? No, no. You look. It looks great. How does Kit's hair always look so like quaffed and like wonderful? I'm oh jealous of people with good hair. Yes. <laughs> How are you so good at this? You get to be good at real sports, I get to be good at fake. That was me! That's still me now! <laughs> Friends are good at real sports and I play video games because I'm cool. Oh my god. What? Oh, I it's love this scene. <clears throat> I mean, if it was me, I'd be absolutely like losing my shit right now because it never snows in England, so... This song... Whoever was in charge of music for this TV show needs a fucking raise because they were... Perfect, like bang on. I love that clip from the comic. But you couldn't ask for a more perfect moment. I'm getting all like, oh, it's just so, all I can think when I watch this is like how much this would have changed my life when I was that age. Like I can't imagine watching this and thinking like at that age being like, that's something achievable that I can have. I just think it's amazing. The old school milk as well. Lovely boy, when did you meet him? You see much more yourself around him. Mm. Oh. It's kind of weird seeing Nick as a redhead again now, like after reading all the books and getting so used to seeing like the blonde hair. I mean, he's still the perfect Nick, but. Don't pretend you have any idea. <laughs> Which one are you supposed to be getting the ball to? Obviously, like I'm not getting my hopes up, but mm. I just think maybe there's a chance. That really like. That gets me a little bit because, I mean, every gay out there will, will remember, like, all their straight crushes and, like, always wanting that little, like, glimmer of hope of thinking that maybe it could be something when knowing kind of that it won't. I don't know, to watch that and kind of know where this progresses, I'm like, this makes me so happy. As your token straight friend, it's my duty to remind you that sometimes people are straight. Just realised in that moment, I, as your token straight friend, so they have kind of brushed over the fact that Isaac might be gay in a really nonchalant way. Interesting. L. Sure. Oh my god, be quiet. <laughs> I'll ask her. Thank you. I make all my promises. <laughs> oh. Tao. Come on. <laughs> I love this scene. I remember this now. Like a, another really like nonchalant scene. Uh, I think saying Un makes it feminine, so you'd be saying you have a girlfriend. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> she, and L clocks on as well. Like, she's not stupid. What's up? Do you do you want to come around my house? Yes. Hi. I was just admiring Tara's hands. <laughs> Such a bad excuse. Also, hers are really soft. That's the gayest excuse. <laughs> <I've ever seen. laughs> yes. Hey. Hey. <laughs> You're terrible. I'm trying. Duh. Your pronoun. They're so cute. Um, <laughs> oh, well, that's that's probably cheating, though. I love how, like, in moments like that, like, Charlie gets moments where he's really brave, and then he, like, kind of recluses back into his little, like, awkward shell. He's just so cute. Oh, it's so cute. Panic in his eyes. They're so like honest with each other and I love that. You look so cuddly like that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> See you Monday. Oh god, I think I know what scene's coming up. I don't think he's straight. <laughs> oh my god, it is. I haven't listened to this song since. I, <laughs> after watching this show, this song was the one that really, really got me. I'm really like heavily moved by music. And I obviously spent that whole weekend like not knowing what the fuck was going on in my feelings. And 
there was one night in my old house I lived, I think I showed you guys in, in one of the videos, like my house backed onto a forest, a plantation. Um, and I used to go for walks around there every morning and then like normally on my lunch break as well. Um, and I walked around, there was one night where I just felt like so fucking lost, it, like because of what I was feeling. I walked around that forest for about an hour listening to this song repeat, just fucking bawling my eyes out. I mean, it was like, not late at night, but it was like eight o'clock in the evening. So luckily there was no one there. It's like a very popular dog walking trail and there was no one there, thank God. Because I just, I remember walking around the woods and just being like, what the fuck is the matter with me? Like, why do I feel like this? And this song is still a bit of a trigger for me. I, I mean, I, I love it. All the Gutland is an absolute genius. If you haven't listened to any of our other music, you need to go listen to it. And the lyrics, oh my God. <laughs> Me. Gin and tonic from a can to ease the pain. How about that? Did it so many times. <sighs> I just remember it so vividly. I don't think I'll ever forget feeling like that. Like, googling things like, am I gay? Why am I gay? How do I not be gay? Can you change from being gay? Like, those kind of things. Like, that's such a serious, like, feeling of self-loathing. <sighs> oh. Yeah. <sighs> so, yeah, guys, that was episode two. Definitely a lot more of an, an emotional one. Um, and definitely not the most emotional one. I guess because the books are so much quicker, like, to kind of go through these stages. I forgot kind of how much of a, an emotional roller coaster this show is. Oh, God, so many emotions. I can't believe that song still really got me. There was a moment there where I thought I might have to pause it because I was getting a little bit too in my feels. Again, I just think it's, it's amazing that the show is normalising, like, feeling the way that Nick feels right now. Like, that feeling of confusion and that feeling of not knowing and figuring out. I'm just so envious that that this is there to kind of help provide that support to to the youth of today. But it's so important. Man, I love the show. Can you guys tell? <laughs> but yeah, that's it for this video, guys. That was episode two. Make sure that you join us in the next video where we look at episode three. But until then, I will catch you in a bit.